All right, welcome everyone. We have got a very special live edition of the Flow Show podcast number 148 here. We have Elias uh, Gutierrez. How are you, man? Very good. Happy to be here. Hey, thank you for the time. I know we've got a very exciting week here. We have uh, the party poker, the Cypress Millions, which three million guaranteed. Don't want to don't want to spoil, but we're we're in the we're here. We're in the tournament. Uh, what is your what is your impression, first of all, of Cyprus and of the venue for this uh, Party Poker Millions? It, it is actually quite good. I I was uh, pretty impressed with how good is the place, the resort, and, and the experience. Is uh, you know, it's a very good mix between poker and holidays vibe. You know. Yeah. No, it's it is. It's cool. I've been coming here. People cannot see it, but there is a view here from your room. There is a view there that it's quite amazing yeah no it's it is cool i've been coming for turn back the <laughs> we'll give him a little view at the end well before the sun goes down we'll, we'll give him a look but um yeah so tell, tell us a little bit about you know I, i'm familiar with you i know you stream on twitch you have a very successful youtube channel uh but for those that potentially may not know you i know you're you're from spanish background um give us a little bit a bit uh how long you've been in poker and, and kind of what you do in terms of more online or live, give us a little bit of a feel on, on what you do within poker. I started playing poker on 2010. Okay. Uh, maybe 2011. I, I, I started, I, I knew poker assisted. Uh, and I started taking it seriously maybe 2010, 2011. Uh, became, I became professional maybe in, in about, about two years later or three. Mm -hmm. And since then, it's been maybe 11 years, maybe. Uh, most of my background is online. I played uh, maybe full ring poker, uh, cash games, during the first uh, three years. Then I switched to six max. Mm -hmm. Then I was playing six max until I made it to high stakes. Then I started YouTube. Uh, and then I, I, I became interested in tournaments because it was uh, much better me, uh, for the new lifestyle I was having. It, it, it makes way more sense because tournaments are, are, are easier to explain or to show mm -hmm. in content creation. Right? Yep. Uh, much more than cash games. Right. Um, yeah. For Twitch in particular, it's like there's a story start and yeah. finish. It's not. Yeah. And, and it is a lot more dangerous to show your your game and the way you think when you're playing cash games because you are playing against the same people all the time. Tournaments, uh, the pool is bigger. It's mm -hmm. way bigger. You are not in the same. You don't have the same five people in six tables or five at the same time. So it didn't make sense all, at all to play cash games when I was actually already producing content. So so I started playing more tournaments maybe three years ago mm -hmm. or something like that. And I started studying, learning more about tournaments, which I love because I, I really like to explore uh, new formats. I, I wouldn't go that, that far to learn Omaha or something like that. That's way too much effort. Love that game. Don't, it's I, fun, man. You'll like it. You, I, I feel I'm already old enough. I mean, 11 years playing poker. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I I would not want to start if I know I'm. it's going to be very difficult to be good at it. Right. Well, but, you'd be surprised, I think, how how bad some people play in Omaha and in, in, in I general. I get confused. There aren't too many draws. Yeah, there's a lot going on. <laughs> I love, I love. <laughs> the viewers like it. They like they like the action. But and how you're 30, 31 years old? Yeah, thirty one. Yes. Thirty one. Okay, so he's still young. I'm thirty five, thirty one. You, you, that, that's that's sort of uh, in poker though. It's getting a little bit older. It's, it's sort of a you know a lot of people. I would say it's a younger younger person sport. What what is the what is the culture? We just had Adrian Mateos on the okay. podcast recently. Obviously. Uh, a very well-known Spaniard, great player. Um, you know, I see he endorses your your coaching uh, site as well, which we'll, we'll show in a little bit. Tell me your relationship uh, with some of the, the Spanish players. Are you do you have like kind of a crew? Are you like a lone wolf, or are you do you have sort of a, a pocket of players that you you talk with and study with uh, for poker? Okay, uh, I I I know most of the bigger names uh, and all the people that you almost all the people that used to play. Uh, let's say live between 2010 and 2013, 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, since 2015, I started living in Asia more. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of moved there. So uh, most of my friends during the last, uh, let's say, five, six, seven years are mainly not poker related, actually. And I've been, uh, uh, yeah, I've been kind of a nomad. What made yeah. you move to? I guess, was it if you could specify where yeah. in Asia and why? Why? Why there? 
Uh, it all, st all started after the Supernova lead in 2014. I okay. did the Supernova lead playing mid stakes, and I was in the UK at the time. Uh, so uh, me and, and the friends I was living with, we wanted a change. Uh, we were uh, a bit tired of the weather and the food and all of that. Mm -hmm. We wanted something completely different. And one of my friends, uh, he he really enjoyed Thailand. So we went to Thailand uh, the first time for me in Asia. And we were we were there maybe for three, four months. Then I started exploring other other parts of Asia, such as Hong Kong, Macau, Philippines, uh, Japan, Korea, mm -hmm. and even uh, even more down there, uh, Australia. I used to live in Australia as well. Nice. So um, I, 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 I got in love with the Asian, with what you feel when you are there. You know, it's, uh, it, is, uh, it is huge. It yeah. is huge. I don't know how to explain it. Uh, in services, uh, lots of services, lots, lots of things to do. I love the Asian food. Um, it, it is intense. And, me too. And it's nice. my favorite food as well. I actually, yeah. I heard someone just was telling me a recent uh, guest on the show was telling me that Thailand's his favorite place in the world as well. So I'm starting to hear more about that and I hope to get to uh, go over there. I haven't been to, to Tokyo or Thailand, but don't, you would say that some of your favorite places in the world are, are these? Uh, Thailand, you know, it's really good for when you're young. So when you are, I don't know, 22, 23, 24, you go there and it's amazing. It's, uh, you know, it's, it, it is still amazing if you go there when you are 30 or 40. Um, uh, but it is more, uh, how can I say? It is um, It is good for um, having fun, let's say. It's a fun country to be in. But uh, if you want to actually stay in a place, there are th certain things that in Thailand you are not getting them right. For example, good air, good air quality. Mm. There is too, There are too many cars. Uh, they don't stop producing more cars. They use garbage oil. Uh, they use some sort of gas that is really, really dangerous. Oh, wow. I don't know that. I would think Thailand's so, like very, uh, I guess it depends what part or where, but I would think it's very, like I think of beaches and relaxing and fresh air. But Yeah, if you go on the sides, of course. If, right. if we are talking about Bangkok, for right. example, which, uh, which is where, where I was living, uh, you're going to have problems of smells, mm. pipes, uh, pipe smells, mm. and, uh, stuff like that. that you actually want them right if right. you're living there, you know? Right. So or like Phuket or maybe some of the island or like out, outside. Yeah, if you like that vibe, amazing. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't live in Phuket, but there are many people who who does, uh, who do. So yeah, uh, I started in Thailand, then the Philippines. Uh, um, I went there because I, I met a, a girl at the time mm -hmm. and she, uh, she was living there. Uh, Korean, uh, I met all her, uh, all, I mean, I, I visited all the Korean restaurants in the Philippines, basically, nice. with uh, her family, then I moved to Australia with her, uh, then we broke up, I went to Macau, uh, I started playing live poker in Macau, cash games, uh, for the first time, which I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. What year was that, roughly? 2016, I Okay. Think. Was there still, like... Some of the Americans were over there. I know, like Brian Rast and and Phil Locke and Robel and those guys were they like they used to go over there. Maybe it was earlier even, or was this still? Because Macau is kind of a well kept secret. I think I didn't uh, meet them. Maybe it was a little. They might have been there like 12, 13 or something. But it was. Uh, I know it's good games, right? They're known for some very. There was very good cash games in Macau. It is a very relaxing place. Decent games. It's not like you're going to get a uh, very often a huge whale or something like that. You know? Right. Maybe let's say four or five times, uh, 10 times per year, maybe mm. you you will get a, you will get someone who is amazing right. to have him at the table. But there are actually many, many days and maybe weeks, even in, in high season. Uh, there are times that uh, you are just there playing against people like you uh, or, or better. Right. They can, they can really play. Yeah. So, so yeah, no, it's not, uh, I mean, it's not amazing either, you know, it's, great right but it, it is because i love the, the experience right and and how would you say let's just kind of jump um i mean we could we could compare different cultures and you've, you've had some experience and friends like the spanish culture versus the american culture what's sort of your perception um and we could talk about asian culture as well but what, what sort of uh what would you say like growing up and, and understanding how would you sort of compare the two in terms of spirits and, and just in general the the spanish uh 
culture is very relaxed, you know, uh, and good at the same time. Spain is a very good country for uh, for living in general. Mm -hmm. it's a, there are many hardworking people, of course, and at the same time, many people who take life, you know, more in a relaxing uh, way, I would say. I, I was telling you before we started the podcast, I, I always thought uh, the, the what I feel it is that Americans work very hard. At least the the ones that that stand up the most, mm -hmm. maybe. I, the the feeling I I I have it is that they are very hardworking and people uh, willing to take risk and all of that. I think in in Europe maybe uh, we are more conservative uh, building mm -hmm. stuff. I actually feel I I am my personality or, or the way I do things. It is more inclined to invest a lot in myself and invest a lot on on basically on quality and trying to be better every day mm -hmm. so i would say you know because um many of the many of the, of the influence influences we we have in europe come from america as well you know tv shows uh, stuff like that mm -hmm. uh, and i think uh, we're influenced by that as well you know in europe so I, I do feel I have a, a lot of influences from from America that kind of are, are, are in me as well, you know? Right. No, it makes a lot of sense. And, and in terms of with Asia and, and living like Tokyo, when you went there for the first time, what, would, yeah. what, what made you kind of fall in love with, uh, with Tokyo and, and that, that area? Why, why out of all the areas you've been, did that stand out to you? Uh, Tokyo is the best balance of a uh, first world country, basically cleanest the cleanest i've been the cleanest uh, country probably uh, amazing food the the only country that i think can compete with spain is japan and it, it is probably even better because of their consistency you know mm -hmm. one of the good things you you have in japan it is that they learn to do one thing and they do it very well that's uh, so you go to restaurants they, they don't have this huge menu of things that they are kind of good at everything you know they have maybe five ten things they're amazing at them mm -hmm. uh, so and, and there is consistency you uh, if you are expecting something you're expecting this quality you you are going to get that quality every day you go so you never have um uh, you all have your expectations uh right mm -hmm. you know you don't get disappointed easily the service is amazing it's a very respectful country um with their i don't know uh a very a very nice lifestyle it has is a uh, bad size of course the language is very difficult uh, it's not like you are going to easily learn japanese uh, and also because of the way they are it is difficult or almost impossible to make friends uh, yeah i want to ask you on that how, how so living there in that regard do you speak some japanese have you tried learning it or, or do you do you speak japanese or some i don't want to learn uh, japanese and I will do it eventually. I'm I'm sure because I'm planning to live there. Mm -hmm. uh, I can speak a few things, you know, like um, everyday yeah. stuff. Hello uh, and all that I stuff. I can there. I can get by basically. Right. I can go to a restaurant. I can I can order food. I can say please. Okay, okay, okay. Onega Pedir la cuenta. Yeah. Uh, how how do they? I'm, how now they, I'm mixing in Spanish. As for the bill. <laughs> how do how do they how do they receive you? Like you said, it's a little bit difficult. Do you feel like culturally? They're less like, like, is it kind of like they look at you a little funny or like not, you know, I guess it's hard, right? If you don't speak the language, it's hard to meet and be friendly with someone. But um, yeah. how, how do you feel like they perceive you? Like, do you feel like you stick out there or are they welcoming or just? You're, you're just a foreigner. Uh, you are a, an, an outsider, but at the same time, they are very welcoming. So it's never a problem. Do people come take pictures with you? Because in uh, in like Beijing, in certain areas I've been, yeah. like they ask to take photos. Like it's almost I like a foreign. I think that those things usually happen in really a small towns. Okay. Or... I live in Tokyo. So. I went. I went when I was in Beijing. I went for the Olympics, and my friend who was there was very tall, like six six, like basketball tall. And like they, everyone was taking pictures with them. Maybe yeah. they thought he was famous, or something, but it was just funny because like yeah, they yeah. would come over, and it was just like all the time. I heard that about China. Yeah, uh, about uh, places in China. Yeah. Too. Also, my 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 niece, same thing. She was like, you know, the, uh, blonde hair, and they like they want to take pictures with. Uh, I think just different, like something that's different. They're not used to seeing. Yeah. They, they, 
they yeah. like taking pictures, but maybe yeah. Tokyo's a little more. Yeah, it's not quite. It's more. It's a big city. Yeah, a lot of a big they city. see a lot of stuff. So and they are used to foreigners, I think. Yes, in Tokyo. Very cool. Well, let's talk a little bit about your. Let me click over here and go to your your. We're gonna talk about a few different things you do, but so the YouTube channel. How did you very successful? Got a nice following and, and great engage engagement. This is the the one uh, for the school actually. This is your YouTube for the school channel. Yeah, the the, the big one is the 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 vlogs one. Ah, okay. Yeah. So we'll have to. Uh, which, which let me. Which one is that? How I mean, this. I mean, I'm saying this because this is just uh, uh, educational content. Ah, uh, okay. If you you just type zero poker. Zero poker. Yeah, just that. It's going to appear at the top. Okay. Take a look here. So this one. Hold on a bit. Uh, that one this one yeah okay ah so you have two channels two separate channels i do yeah yeah very <laughs> cool i didn't i didn't see it should i done. separated the um, the vlogs uh, from the educational content um, uh, the last few videos are not vlogs because i could not produce anything during the lockdowns but previously to that uh, basically i'm i am doing lifestyle content uh, when i can play poker i i do and like yours in there content in vegas for example but I, yeah. Uh, so, so tell me, how, how did you decide to dive into the content? Because it is a, you know, I, I find the, the the people that are able to do content and poker, you know, it's a lot of work, right? It's almost yeah. like it's a separate thing to be good at poker, study, work on your game, also do content. You got to be aware of what people like, how to do it. Do you, I mean, do you have a video editor? Do you have a team? Do you do all your thumbnails? It definitely how, what, made my life more difficult. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work, right? It's a full time job. It, it, it yes, it is. Uh, when I started, I was doing everything alone. Uh, so uh, maybe for a couple of years, uh, mm -hmm. I was trying to learn everything. Uh, then um, I got editors. I started with one. And at the current moment, I have four, mm -hmm. uh, but for different things. Right now, uh, here in Cyprus, uh, I have three of them with me. Okay. And and they all help uh, producing what, I, what I'm doing now. Uh, Very cool. We are actually trying to do... Uh, or trying to evolve what we currently do. We want to um, to be even more professional. You know, uh, there are certain levels you you meet maybe in in documentaries stuff like that. You know that you watch the content and you say, oh, this is cinema level maybe or something. Right. Like that. We are not. We, we want to keep uh, the spirit of YouTube alive. You know the because it has. Um, how can I can I explain it? Uh, YouTube is what it is maybe because it, it is real it, feel, it feels way more real than mm -hmm. traditional television is less produced it's more uh, yeah uh, you get emotions uh, the way they are mm -hmm. it's very interesting you say this because this is a uh... I actually fascinating to to hear more about the process and how that works because you know for like this WSOP I've done a couple summers WSOP vlogs myself and I noticed it was actually my first two losing summers i'm 20 35 maybe gone 12 years but i had the the when i started doing the vlogs you know so i was doing the the filming myself i would not do the editing but i would upload it send it do the titles thumbnails also like i think that process of getting organized you know investing in yourself investing in people like you said you have three people here i mean that's a that's a major production right you're talking about flights uh hotels yeah, yeah, yeah. organization hopefully you can get some deals and that's arrangements, why I but that's cool so i can pay for it <laughs> exactly it's not cheap right because it's like no, you're it's talking not. about you know if you look at uh it's a long game because the actual act of videos on youtube like even i'm sure some of these videos and we can take a look here right you have some very successful videos hundreds of thousands of views but like you know people ask me a lot too on um you know they'll, they'll ask me uh you know, how much do you make on YouTube or how much do you make on Twitch? And I say, well, look, it's not, uh, you know, it's not really, it's not like you're making money necessarily from the videos, but if you have a product to promote, right? If you have a school, if you have affiliate deals and things, or, or you get a deal with sites, like there is money to be made, but it's not, it's a long game. You got to kind of do it. It's not going to happen at once. And you're not from the YouTube video getting rich yeah, off yeah. of like no, no, a couple of hundred not. thousand of views. So not. it's, it's tricky. And I think that that is, uh, you know, kind of like Gary Vee. You know, uh, Spanish content makes a lot less money than uh, content in English. I'm not. I, I would. That makes sense, but I uh, don't know. We can that. compare. Actually, uh, I can tell you in a hundred thousand views, maybe I can make between two hundred to four hundred dollars. Right. 
Yeah, I, I think, yeah, it's less, but it's not much. I mean, it's, it just depends. Like, um, I think that is, I don't know that, I don't know all the standards. I know for, that does sound low compared to what, uh, you know. That's what it is. Right. And there are many uh, uh, countries that speak Spanish that they don't, I mean, they don't even, I mean, send. And where, where is, so are your, most of your viewers from, or was Spain? They are fifth, about 50%. Uh, from Spain and let's say 40, 45 uh, Latin America, and then five percent everywhere, everywhere else. Right, and, and and when we talk about trying to uh, to learn Japanese, for example, I mean, I my wife is Brazilian. I okay. don't speak Portuguese. I, we've been together seven years. It's a little embarrassing, but I try to tell her I'm trying to learn poker first, like you know, before I can go. Same thing, right? Like Japanese, like it's you the same you, thing for me. Yeah, I'm, I am delaying learning Japanese. Fluently. Yeah, because it takes time. You know, you're going to set two yeah, hours yeah. a day or something, an hour a day. Like, and look, it, you it, got... it's not as smart to learn something when you're not ready to to actually put the time because whatever you learn, if you're not using it, you're going to forget it. Right. So what do you, what do you remember when you were 15 studying in the school? Oh, it's a, yeah. It's you, a, it, what do you remember? Three percent? Yeah, maybe. Five? Yeah, something like that. So everything you learn and you don't use, you will forget. Yeah, it it so but so to that point, I, I think I, I'm curious always with creators and, and content because um, I always try to compare and get better myself with stuff like how how you break down time between studying and and and, and uh, you know I guess it's changed now you have a team right but like yeah. what do you because um, I think that's the ultimate goal is like you want to go show up at the tournament wake up do your workout whatever routine go play not have to deal with anything because I think that's what I found to be the most frustrating because like when i'm actually carrying the thing first of all it's not great shots you know it's not fully natural if i see someone i want to talk to as well it's like i have to hold it or do something and it's just not right like i want to just like almost act like you know kind of like negranu too like he has very he has people filming and you know do his thing and as you get that sort of process it, it allows you to be better too because i was finding the world series that i was coming late i was coming at like 4 p.m 5 p.m you know events start at noon I'm just like tired. It was it was too much. It was too much organization and, and whatever. So, um, do, did you notice that for a while? Was it like really? And then, and then you when you you kind of realized because I mean three people's a lot. That's of a that's course. a that's a lot. But it's probably really what's needed, right? Because again, for it to be good and great, you you got it. You don't want to do in the thumbnails or like the titles, right? You just you kind of want to just be like, look, I want to play. You guys, I trust you. You know what I like. Here's what I would because you you kind of have a hard time letting go of control though because like in a way you film it or how it is like I want it this way. And if you watch a video come out, you're like, oh, I could have done it differently or better. You just kind of, at this point, accept it and, and you tell them. You give them feedback. Okay, this is a lot. Yeah, I want to so, hit you with 20 questions. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's just start from the yeah. beginning. So tell um, me, uh, yeah, how, how about control? How about, like, is it hard for you to let go of control? Uh, at first, yes. Yeah, of, of course. Uh, the key point is to find people who can do what you do better than you, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, and once you find those people, they basically gain your trust, then you say and you, and you believe them because there are many times uh, that you are um, you think what you think is right, you know, uh, and they say no. I think this is going to work better. So you need to uh, test basically. You need to give a test to right. what they are saying, and along the, and, and it it builds trust. I think. Uh, so as I, as I was saying before, the first two year, I, uh, the first two years I was doing everything alone. Mm -hmm. And it was a problem. I was stressed. Um, it was unhealthy, and I could not do everything correctly at the same time. So one of the key points, at least for me, that uh, that I think are key, basically, is dividing, uh, doing one thing, one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I create, I create kind of like seasons of work. You know, uh, I decide, okay, the next for the next four months. I am going to be the best person I can to produce content. You know, I'm going to be the the best YouTuber of poker I can be, mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, and that's what I am doing right now. For example, I'm here in Cyprus. I'm going to be recording uh, all these millions events, uh, and I am going to produce this the best way I can. And I am not uh, thinking about anything else at all. You know, I'm not doing anything related with anything else. And I have a lot of things I can do. For example, the school responding comments. Um, I don't know. So, so, so let me ask you on that then. So now, 
Uh, I think we're very similar in some of those respects because of exactly like trying to do a podcast, trying to stream on Twitch, trying to do YouTube, these different things. Like, you know, Somerville did that too, where he would literally stream on Twitch for, you know, month or two and then take off a month or two because i do think that there is something to that and being very focused and direct because if you're when you're scattered and you've tried it i've tried it it's very hard and i'm always trying to optimize as well and think about it but that's a that's a really good way and how do you how do you do that though in with your school so you have this let's just uh, pull it over here i know uh we're showing your so you have this the zeroespoker.com so let's take this Mm. i don't know how many students you have for for everyone watching this is a spanish poker school so everything is in spanish uh you are reading that in English because I think you have the translator yes. activated. But everything is it is in Spanish. So okay, so there's our guy who was just on last week, actually, Adrian Mateos, very you know, one of the world, there you go, world number one or one of the best and giving a nice endorsement here. But so let's take this school. So how do you do that though? If you say right now you're just gonna you're gonna go and you're playing live poker and you're not commenting or replying or being involved, do you have a team managing this and keeping up a bit? Cause it's kind of yeah. hard to just turn off your your students or people and just say okay i'm going away for four months or how do you how do you translate that message to them i i try to be as smart as i can with time for example the last year it was a year that it didn't make sense to produce uh blogs for Mm -hmm. example so Mm -hmm. i decided not to do blogs so for a year my audience didn't (laughs) didn't get much out of me but uh in the school i was uh working on that maybe 10 12 hours per day and actually, that website is new. It's a new website that we launched in January mm-hmm. this uh, this same year. So the, the last year was a lot about building that. And this year, it's been a lot about producing content for this website. Mm-hmm. So I've been, um, for the last uh, eight months, producing videos, basically, um, trying to be very organized and very methodic on everything I do there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I took, for example, a, a break during the scoops to stream for a month. So I, during that month, I was the best streamer I could be. So that's what I did. Mm-hmm. And I was for a month, I was just focused on that and doing everything around that. And right. then I, when I was almost finishing the, the, the latest tournaments, I was telling my audience, see you guys in a few months because I, I am done with this now, for now, I will come back. But uh, uh, I think uh, my audience knows that they know that I am not a full-time streamer. I am not a full-time YouTuber, and I am not anything full-time. Right. Because I'm doing way too many things to be full-time on anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I try to combine. You know, for example, uh, this last year when I was when I'm playing, at the same time I am studying or I'm, I am basically thinking on a strategy. When I am producing content for the poker school, basically I am studying all the time to produce that content. Right. And when I am Right now, here, I'm not studying because I've been studying before. Mm -hmm. So at this moment, I just produce content. I play with what I already know and I make the videos, Right. you know? So I try to divide. I I don't do too many things at the same time or everything becomes messed up and it doesn't work. Right. You don't feel proud of what you are doing, which is worse. I, uh, yeah, that's, I think that's one of the hardest things to Patrick Leonard. Um, you know, I really respect him and, and, and how he approaches things and same thing. Like he'll basically say, look, I study or I do my stuff other than I play Sundays. I just study poker for a couple months. And then when it's time for these big series, I go in and play and play and, and, and learn and take notes along the way. But um, I guess that's what I want to understand about consistency. Let's take a look here at Twitch. So again, you have a very good following. Uh, as, we, as, you, as, as advertised, you said, look, this is two months ago. So you didn't, you weren't, you haven't streamed in a while, but you, you know. Actually, that, those, those were like uh, three, four uh, sponsored. Let's say I, I was producing content for the school. On those streams let's say though Let, let's say let's say like that okay so so how like in your mind is it frustrating a bit though because of uh like twitch where for example it's so much consistency you know like yeah. i i stream for uh 2016 17 18 a lot you know i was on five days a week three days a week sometimes a month at a time and you really build a community you get to know people yeah and, yeah, yeah. and it's all that and then you know you go away for three months come back for a couple times it it's very hard on twitch it's not I, a I like to think yeah, I'm not sure, but I like to think that the people who are watching Twitch, 
then when I when I'm when I am done with the Twitch season, let's say, they will go to YouTube to do to, to watch what they I'm follow doing your YouTube. sort of uh, trajectory. They follow yeah. around, and I think when I started on Twitch, I already had a following on YouTube. So whatever I, I got on Twitch, it came from YouTube. Right. Most of them, I think. Right. Well, so so yeah. So to your point, that's that's what works though, because if you at least are, hey, I'm here now. I'm here now. I'm here. Yeah. It's easier than if you're just like. Here, 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 a little, little, and, little. And sometimes you say, I'm nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there's the nowhere too. So, uh, well, you don't have, listen, you don't have a, a child yet. Uh, it's from what I know, right? Like, it, it's it's just, yeah. I'll just say whatever. Like, for someone where you're doing all these things, I'll you know, be ready to know that, that uh, yeah, that, that's another pocket. It takes away a lot of, a lot of time uh, yeah. as well. So, uh, but uh, very cool. And uh, what, do, what do you enjoy the most out of the, the school, the YouTube, the Twitch? If you just, if someone said to you right now, look, you got to take a year and just do one of these things, what would be your choice? Um, Today, you know, it will be today. YouTube because YouTube. I'm tired of lockdowns and being at home. You want to so get it I, I don't want to be at home right now. I want to be, I want to feel freedom. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me today, it will be, I want to explore and to move around and to visit places and get new, new experiences, basically. If you ask me, I don't know, uh, like a year and a half ago, I would say probably I want a year of being alone doing what I exactly what I did, mm -hmm. which is build my my school. So and that's that's what I've been I've been doing mostly uh, during the lockdown period, right? Uh, using my time. I, I like to think wisely, right? Because it made more sense to do that at that time. And and how how long did the so the lockdown period, you know, I think, again, this been a crazy year and a half for the world, right? Like, just not good in general. It's just not right. It's just a weird thing. It's it's affected many people. I think again, we're in the same similar type of boat with content poker. You know, we're we're fortunate in the sense that if we're put in front of a computer or in a place, there's a lot of things we can do or get done and accomplish. Have you felt that this period has been, although frustrating, likely like has it been productive and you were able to really, you know, in a way, just say, okay, no, I don't have to worry. I don't have to like. FOMO about missing a series or missing this or doing that. It's just like, I can't do this. And now I'm going to focus on that. Has it been beneficial to your sort of uh, your focus in your career? Do you think, or I, I feel I'm, I'm, I did, I, I, I made good decisions during this period. I, I, I really do think that at the same time, I'm aware that during this lockdown period, uh, tables were very good. For example, as a poker player, mm -hmm. a part of me wanted to play more, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I know that, uh, from during some moments they were amazing right uh, the tables um and i missed out a bit on that but you cannot have everything you cannot have everything um from my point of view i've been studying a lot uh, learning a lot uh, which i need because i as, as you know if you are creating content and all of that uh, it is easy to uh, yeah it's, it's lucid, it, it is easy to to, to, to not le learn enough yes. and neglect, yes. So I feel that th this last year was important for me on that, uh, to keep myself fresh. Uh, mm -hmm. And at the same time, I was combining, you know, doing things that make sense together, uh, studying, creating content uh, for educational content. Right. Uh, and finishing that, uh, playing live poker or online poker, mm -hmm. you know, uh, everything in seasons that makes sense. And, but at, at a month ago, two months ago, I was burned. Uh, I was complete, completely burned. You were looking forward to this trip. Yeah. Yeah. And even it was a confusing time, right? Because it's like things change, rules change. Was it hard to get uh, paperwork, documentation? Or were you like, uh, w was there still a sweat? Were you worried like at any point that this might not even happen? Or, or did you? Were Actually, you... it was quite, quite close to not even happening because um, we didn't know if we could get into North Cyprus or not. Mm -hmm. it, it was difficult because I'm wearing a GPS tracker. So uh, Spain is a red zone for this country, you know, so I need to have this on with me and pair with my mobile. Um, oh, wow. That's, that's actually, I've not seen that. That's fascinating. I've never... Yeah, some people have it. Uh, if, they, if they come, oh, if they've been in the latest two weeks in a red zone country, which Spain is. Oh, wow. Uh, so it was quite annoying to fill all the paperwork for this because you need i need to spend like two hours understanding what's going on with this and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the data yeah uh, wow uh, stuff like that is not the stuff you would need to do in normal times well yeah um, besides that 
it is annoying to plan to plan trips when you have to do a PCR uh, three days before your trip because you cannot even buy the flights the flights in advance. Mm -hmm. You are worried that you might miss the flight you want. Maybe you know. Yeah. Uh, there are less less options as well. Uh, for example, uh, before this trip, I didn't even know Cyprus is divided into mm -hmm. many, many people watching watching this will not know. Yeah, either. of course. Uh... Um, so I had to plan what route I take in order to arrive here. I go through South Cyprus, Larnaca Airport, Larnaca, yeah. and then go up. Uh, I go through Turkey. Uh, yeah. It's a border in dispute a bit, right? Yeah, hour and a half drive from that airport. It's a, it's a hike. Yeah, know? at the end, for example, I decided to do it through Turkey because uh, it made more sense. If I'm going through the South, I had to fly uh, in a Greek airline, which was pretty shitty, it looked like. Uh, Turkish Airlines is better. Uh, at the same time, I, I had to deal with the south, arriving on the south, and then deal crossing the border with the north. So I just deal with one country. I go, I go through Turkey. Mm -hmm. How know? long is the uh, once you land in Turkey to come here? Because I've always gone through Larnaca. It was seven hours from Spain. Seven. A complete. Oh uh, no! But wait, when you land in Turkey, how long is the drive from the airport to here? Ah, that was that was uh, an hour and a half, maybe. Okay. But it's connected. Is it? Is there a? It's 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 a bridge? one airplane. One airplane. Okay, yeah. And okay. and the uh, and you arrive in er Erkan Airport. Uh, I think they pronounce it differently. Mm -hmm. They pronounce the name differently. But you arrive in Erkan Airport, and it is like forty minutes. Okay. Forty minutes taxi. Maybe. So not so yeah, a little less interesting. Yeah. No, it is fascinating. Mm -hmm. The north and south stuff. I I didn't realize that either, and they don't recognize uh, each other, and that they had some bad blood or a revolutionary war. I think in yeah. the seventies or eighties. But uh, but yeah. Um. So yeah, it's not easy, right? And then to get your team here, same thing. So now you have three people. You, you got to deal with that, and it's uh, it is a production. And how how um would you say was there an was there an inflection point for you when you got sort of big enough or um recognize where you know party poker or the world series or places like because the where you get like you know okay hey we'll bring you here or well your team because like that obviously is expensive if you have to pay for yeah. the rooms for your team flights all these things like oh, like do you feel that there was you've crossed a, a a point in time where now you feel like you're being asked to come instead of like um hey i want to come and do this like I, tell me yeah. a little about that process i think that started recently um because until i think we we kind of prove ourselves, my editors and I, we prove, we prove ourselves uh, with our content after Vegas uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. Because that, that was the first time we produced live content kind of the right way. And Vegas is quite, quite restrictive to produce content because uh, even if you get uh, media credentials, credentials, they will tell you to, to record only in in 10 minutes. So basically, the way it works, it is that uh, they, uh, if you have a, an editor, for example, uh, a cameraman or a cameraman, uh, he will have to be with an escort for 10 minutes and he, he will follow your cameraman and you cannot film a full table play, for example. Then after that, they can be in the, in the playing area taking pictures and all of that, but they are not supposed to be recording, mm -hmm. you know? So we produced all these videos in Vegas in yeah. this, uh, in this uh, situation, you know, and it was quite difficult. For example, right now in the millions uh, series, we don't have restriction, any restriction on how long we can record or anything like that. So we can record full table play. You know, we, we got all the hands I played recorded. So in, in my content, when I am explaining hands, we can show everything, exactly everything I'm talking about. We can right. show the, the person who I was playing with and myself and the face I, I, I had at that moment. And the right. Way. So it, it is different. You know, I, I think uh, right now we are uh, in a very good moment because we are starting to get uh, big companies uh, such as Party Poker interested in allowing us to produce this right. because it is a win-win for let, everyone. Let me ask you about how, um, you know, it's so crazy because the, the, the EV and understanding poker and variants and, and stuff, it's, it's, we obviously professional, we understand it, right? It's like you, you aces the Kings or four to ones or flips and they're very important. Do you ever feel, um, yourself on Twitch, but maybe more importantly here playing any differently or feeling not pressure, but realizing, wow, like, me getting to 
in the money, me getting to, you know, the uh, the final table, me win, how much like that would be, what it could do for you. Like, let's just say me or you win this event, right? Million dollars to first, let's call it, or 600,000. Like it would, it would take your channel from, you know, being like very well known and recognized to like, it could be like revolutionary, right? Like it's like people would be like, you can use so much with it, so much content, so much for your school, so much for this, that. Uh, and also just like from a product, like kind of like Gus Hansen, right? He won that tournament, wrote a book. He was recording every hand on microphone. Do you know this one? He wrote a book on Aussie Millions. He won the main event, I think. But every hand, every single hand, he would record about what he had, what happened in between hands or whatever, literally every hand. And that book, you know, it's kind of cool, right? He won a tournament by like replaying and then he would go through and talk about the hands. So like this though, it's on another level, right? It's like steroids. Like you have yeah. every you have video of it. You have the motions. You can use clips. It's, it's yeah. unlimited. So do you ever, I guess a long, long version question, like on the bubble, for example, or uh, in a big spot, do you feel yourself playing a little differently or taking a less risk adverse because you know it's so valuable? I, I feel I'm, I am very methodic with the strategies I, I use. Either they are good or bad. Uh, but I, 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 I try to play in the way I always plan to uh, or the way I studied for, uh, that situation for. You know, I, I, um, I'm very structured on how I study and, and on how, on how I how I play. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it is true that there are a few things in life poker that you want to take into consideration um, can help. For example, the other, the other day I, I was playing a three-way pot mm -hmm. uh, against two guys uh, and I had a, this guy is betting, a, he's making a big bet and putting me in a lot of pressure, very difficult situation. And I have a, a guy behind me. Uh, and I, uh, he's a recreational. I, I see he start with a mobile playing. With, you know, uh, I know he's out of the hand. So that information is useful. You don't get that in online poker, for example. So you can think on that situation as a one versus one. You know, mm -hmm. and your situation actually become becomes easier. Right. Right. So there are uh, certain certain things like this in live poker that uh, will change a bit the way you play. Right. Yeah. Because you get information on basically what people are are doing let me give you an example like in this tournament let's say day two the money hits for example i don't know i mean this is going to be i think it'll get well over the 600 guarantee right this is uh in, the, in this tournament let's just say let's just say it hits a thousand entries you know 150 cash there's 152 left yeah you know you're in a spot with like a healthy stack say you have like 40 blinds or something you're on the money bubble yeah. and a spot where you have ace king suited or queens and like it's kind of obvious the table captain is aggressive it's probably way ahead but like would you pass the spot because you know like making the money like does it does it impact you at all about like making I'm the money to, in a, if, I, if, if you I have, have a premium to, you're going for it doesn't yeah, matter you're if, playing your hand if i have to bluff i will bluff and i will just enjoy the tournament as i would normally play it and i as i right. think is right and but let's say also like two tables left you're down 13 left you're like eight yeah. nine of 13 but this is the same in online poker yeah right i mean you will have that same situation you can think exactly in the same way the same fears the well, same but i'm saying i'm saying i'm i'm coming from the perspective of too like about the content side. Content creation. The, 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 yeah with with twitch too because in twitch as well you know the numbers build the hype gets in people start I've rating been, in you twitch, i've the... been in that situation many times i'm in twitch i i won already three tournaments one of the w coops uh, another one an, a knockout in party poker and recently a, a scoops mm -hmm. uh, and I, I've done second places uh, and a few final tables. And the truth, I think it is that if you don't take those risks, uh, you will not get into the final table position. To, right. To, you know. You have to play correctly still, yeah. If you start passing spots or being yeah, passive. Yeah, you, you know, it's easier to think. It, it is easy to think that if you start basically. <sighs> Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it is easy to think that if you uh, st uh, if you play more tight, let's say, it, it is going to be actually safer right. to get into the final table and to get this exposure and content yeah. creation and all of that. I think uh, it is worse. It works end. out adversely, yeah. Yeah, because you don't want to be the six positions, eight position guy all the time. Right. Right. Who who gets into the final table almost dead. Right. You want to exactly that. That's yeah. it. I think that one of the hardest things in poker, I think tournament poker is for sort of understanding that. that and it took me a long time to kind of even comprehend it. But yeah, the thought of like, oh, I want to be final 15 or 12. 
and, and then you limp in or get seventh, eights, ninths, right? Versus like taking some chances, playing aggressive, playing how you're supposed to play because the first, second, thirds are so big. You'd rather get 15th like three or four times and then take the uh, the first or second than, than get, um you know, just always get like eighth or ninth or tenth. If you're able to get deep and know how to play, but you're you're playing a bit. So I think that's uh, – it's interesting. I just, you know, again, you got three people here filming you got yeah, yeah, yeah. you got party you got people like the whole thing like the difference in a, a video um you know depending on how you do it it can be a it's a big difference to make the cash and be on the thing you get the hen and mob flag you know not, next but. week we go to vegas uh, we will produce more content more yep. tournaments there will be more chances if i lose uh taking a risk i, I do it Probably. Yes, that's I, I that's the right probably. answer. This is the guy you got to follow him. I'm telling you, that's that's the right answer. He knows what to do. He's got exciting. Know, if stuff. you're worried about your content, I think one of the key points it is that my content is not only about poker. You know, it is about the I'm, I'm blogging the the transition between uh, this place to Las Vegas. For example, I'm going uh, through Istanbul. Uh, we will rent a place in Istanbul. We we will show a bit of Istanbul the lifestyle kind in of a tough, poker yeah. style yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of vibe. And I'm coming here. I did the same. And in the breaks, you know, we have right. our jokes, catching mosquitoes, stuff like that. You yeah. know. So we make our content in a way that it is enjoyable for people who actually doesn't care about poker. So tell me when you when you are traveling or in, I'm between, so who will come with you to to uh, Vegas? Like in terms of the, the people that are filming and part of your YouTube team, are they they're your friends now or have become your friends or do you have friends as well on top of the people that are filming and doing your stuff like now what you say when you go from here to vegas yeah. who, who who will that consist of like what's your team make made up of is it it's the three cameramen or for uh producing blogs mm -hmm. uh, the team is the three editors mm -hmm. basically uh they they you know they they are taking turns for example recording so they they can change they are not doing all the time the same thing uh, but uh, but I'm sorry, are those like guys is, are those like guys you're having beers with and they hang out and like you guys are all friends or is it more like you're like the star and they're like no. part part like are they you know what I'm saying they're, no, they're no, YouTube uh, first we, we but you become friends I think right. we are close uh, but there is a still professional respect right I would say but at the same time we are close and we can enjoy a good dinner together and have a laugh and talk about non work related topics right and we enjoy having time together I think. Very cool. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, no, that's good that you got you got to like, yeah, that, that helps. I, I think it is important to to keep the professional uh, respect as well, you know, otherwise it could be bad. Uh, right. And and who is there any YouTube channels poker wise, otherwise that, you know, you watch uh, and have taken notes from or I'm sure you're, it's evolved a lot from when you started. Yeah. But like, do you what, what you know, is there any, I guess, outside of poker type feel and look like Casey Neistat, stuff like that? Yeah, yeah you know, Casey Neistat, I think it's, he has been the influence for um, any blogger who started. Mm -hmm. Who do you watch to learn how to blog? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, yeah. <laughs> you, go, you go through the basics. Uh, so the, through through him basically right yeah <laughs> and a... uh, yes when I started making content I I I, I watched him uh, and a few others and at this point uh, I feel we are doing our, our own thing we have the edit uh, the team of editors they are amazing mm -hmm. they are very good every one of them is especially good at one thing you know which is very good for the content. And uh, at the same time, we even uh, we are even improving in the music area because we have a music composer as well in the team. He's not traveling with us because he doesn't need to. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have a full time uh, person on that creating music for the videos. So how? Give me give me the full scope. You got three guys here, three on the ground. They'll come yeah. to Vegas. So they're here at Cyprus and they're filming you and editing and then they upload it, do all this stuff, whatever. How, who else is, makes up your team? You, like, do you have a manager? Do you have an agent? Do you have, you have the music guy? Give me your whole, give me the playbook. Uh, I have kind of like a CEO who helps me with uh, legal stuff uh, in mm -hmm. the company. Uh, I have a person taking care of the school, uh, uploading the content of the school and basically managing the social media. Okay. Um, then um, I have uh, one designer for the everything related with the website and a few other things we are building that mm -hmm. I didn't announce yet. I have a designer, two developers, uh, three editors, no, four editors, actually. Uh, I have one for the school as well, uh, but he's not traveling on, on this content. Uh, um, it's a lot. So you have a team of 10 plus. 
maybe eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. And was that a was that a big leap for you to take that from you doing it yourself? The control you said to let go a little bit difficult initially, but also to say, look, I'm going to invest money. <laughs> These are, you know, I have employees, I have people I have to pay now, no matter what. Like, what did you sort of take a chance, or did you first get the school going, start making money, or did you just like dive in? And then I've been always catch- trying to basically spend what I make. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I am not yet making any decent money from the school or from anything I do mm-hmm. myself. But at the same time, I think the situation is quite safe to right. to pay everyone who works with me. Nice. And, and I feel that the more I invest in myself and everyone around me, basically, uh, basically, uh, the bigger is everything, right? You know, the bigger it can become. So yeah, they say, I'm taking that approach. Yeah, uh, invest in yourself, right? If That's it a... doesn't work, I will, <laughs> I will regret. <laughs> but I, I think it will work. Yeah, no, for sure. And uh, no, it's fun, right? It's also it's, it's like you're 31, you're young, you've done this like traveling and and being the poker. It's a uh, it is cool, right? Like these are experiences. You've been all over the world. You've met interesting people, gone to interesting places. Like no matter what, in in the future, you know, I think you it's uh, something no one can ever take away from you. Like you know, when you look back on, I'm yeah. like that's how I feel too. Like I, there's other the things. Is, you know, it, yeah. it is what matters. Uh, you can have an amazing car today that in 20 years it's going to worth a lot less. I mean, 100 years, it, it, it is worth probably nothing, uh, right? Um, I I don't care too much about material things. The only one I care a, a bit too much is about my own house, which is a dream I had. I I, I have that safety, I feel. It's, it, it is safe, safety for me. Mm-hmm. have my home already paid. Uh, I don't need to worry about that. Uh, I, I love everything about it. And, and besides that, I feel comfortable comfortable spending everything I make. Right. Com- completely comf- comfortable spending money on tournaments, content creation. I try to be smart on how I mm-hmm. spend my money or how I invest it as well. Right. Um, and I feel everything is going to go all right. Uh, I'm confident with that too. But I, if I, even if I lose everything, uh, I know I can I can make a very decent living, living just playing poker or just creating I'm very diversified, right? Uh, so in, anything that happens, I'm I have a, an exit, many exits actually. That's yeah, it's important. And, and what is the what is the views on crypto NFTs and in, in kind of Spain? Would you say as a whole, like is it is it something you would like the typical person, maybe your parents or friends? Um, you know, you don't have to give me your 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 playbook on crypto, but like, is it something that people are like, oh, this is cool? Like, do you see Spain sort of? inviting it welcoming it are they frowning upon it or just not indifferent to it i don't see spain as a country doing anything with with crypto right yet right i don't see it and if they do something it will be bad because the current government is they like to control and they, 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 yeah they, they are control freaks uh so they want everything public and all that they they are not so very... crypto's not doesn't necessarily with spain and crypto aren't like a no, perfect blend no i don't think so but i don't live in spain so right i don't doesn't really affect me anything they do mm-hmm. but um but yes i am i, I like crypto and uh, i i like what what uh where is where everything is going for, yeah. i like it nfts are very interesting the the, the property theme of uh, stuff digital stuff it is very interesting mm-hmm. i really like it i i don't invest in nfts because i don't know enough about it right but you can invest kind of in nfts by buying you know the, the ecosystem right the the if or whatever you know the so I, on that i i am invested uh but um yeah, no, I, I love it i don't know where it is going but i i feel it's it's nice for for the world I think we need to be less dependent on big banks, big corporations, uh, governments. Yes. I am a bit scared of the governments basically destroying the whole thing. But for now, it seems they are happy just to get a cut right on the on right. everything we make yeah it is it, it is it, it's it's such a volatile thing you know it's like the seeing the the rises and the and the dips and just like a little bit of news or one person saying or doing something can really that's because move. it is a, still a very young market yes so it, it is a lot of opportunity because it is a still a small mm-hmm. you know uh once it is when it once it's huge it doesn't matter whatever elon Musk says exactly you know exactly it, it affects now because right. it is a small mm-hmm. but once it is huge like many other things right uh it, 
the variance is going to be a lot smaller, let's say that way. Yeah, I mean, if you think about the infant, like really when it, I'd say 2016, 17 was like where it started to really get popular or first attention. Yeah. You know, you think about it, even like call it 10 years, like 2008, I think it officially started. But like, yeah, like think about money, gold, these things have been around forever, like cash, banks and stuff. So it's like the, to think about it's it really is. And it's like infancy stages still some people think oh i missed it bitcoins at this or that but really yeah, it doesn't and I, matter and I, like... and I felt the same way you know because i didn't i i, I used crypto since four years ago maybe mm -hmm. but i never hold it right because i used it because it was useful for me mm -hmm. you know i finished playing here i need a way to move all this money that i made from gambling or whatever i need to move it right here i hope you use this i hope you have luxon do you use luxon yeah. luxon luxon, this? luxon. Oh, no, I don't. no, you know, it's uh, for here. It's uh, it honestly, it's amazing because they you can you can send money with crypto and have okay. and and change it into cash and use it easily. Like you can literally in on party poker, for example, you can't player to player transfer, but you can send. But do Luxon. they take fees? Uh, it, how it, much? It's like literally nothing. It's a uh, it's it's almost zero. They they have uh, deals with the sites and things. They're not charging the customer um, or nominal. It's a nominal fee. So hmm. I. We got. We got to get you. We'll get you set I, I, up on Luxon. I've done. I've done the 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 more sketchy. <laughs> uh, okay. I've done the. Do you know this guy who who has money in Vegas and, I, and he, yeah. he wants Bitcoin? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So can very, we hard votes for him? Yeah. yeah. How All many right. hard votes can, can we get from from for this guy? <laughs> Listen, I'll hard vouch for Luxon. You should. Uh, you should look. Actually, different countries. But I think that's going rules. to disappear soon because they are uh, the governments are starting to. Uh, to care about the regulation and all mm -hmm. that and and yeah you are going to need you will need an explanation on how you got money right uh this money that i got have in vegas for example so i can move my money uh, through banks it's, it's just it is annoying uh, right. they make it the slow they freeze the money they yeah, ask for they, fees, they, they, it takes it is yeah. annoying and all of this comes comes from regulation they they because the governments are governments they want all the control they want to understand everything you have how you got it because they want their cut you know they always want their cut so uh, at the end of the day we are just ants right you yeah know? it's that's a it's a i think it's a good way to to to, to put it out and but crypto um... is a bit uh it, it it creates freedom economic freedom uh but we need to see if we can keep it like that that's the that's what uh we would see yes for sure well listen i know uh it's uh we're, i do want to show the view here before the sun goes down and we've uh we've covered a lot is there uh any other you know so you have vegas coming up which is going to be you'll be there for the entire series you're going to film pretty much everything you play is that I'm the going, plan? yeah i'm not going to play everything but i'm going to film everything i played and and on your so people have an idea when you do film let's take vegas coming up so you play let's say a 1500 or a 3k six max are you uploading every single tournament win lose or indifferent yeah, or yeah, I, I do everyone so each yeah, event yeah. you play it's a, it's it goes I up i lose i film it and i explain how i lost it and right and what i'm doing next right uh, it's the whole thing it's the i try to create a, a story mm -hmm. uh, based on reality right you know? And I, I try to keep it real and connected and make it in a way that it doesn't feel like uh, what matters the most is the result, mm -hmm. you know? That's why I try to include in the videos a lot about the, the lifestyle, a, a lot of that, a lot about, about opinions on what do I feel being here, mm -hmm. you know? What do I feel eating in this specific place or hanging with a specific people, you know? Mm -hmm. I try to, uh, to show more about the life and put it all together like a documentary but keeping the what youtube is you know and so you're you're you have like you do twitch highlights as well like will you have a twitch stream and you take that run or a score and put it on i've done that but i highlight. do that only as a content i produce during series during okay. when i'm playing online events but for example right now uh i ha actually have a couple of videos i did i did not upload yet but uh everything i do on that matter, mm -hmm. it's going to be during a, in a specific or, or produced in a in a month. Okay, a month that I decided to use for that. You know, to play live, I will use that content, of course, uh, to to grow the second channel, basically. And how did you find these YouTube, the YouTube editors, also the live? 
people to film like that are here? Where did you, how did you, uh, did you put out like an ad for it or, or did you have people from your community? The first one, uh, it was, uh, I said it in a video, I need an editor. Uh, then I got maybe, I don't know, 80, 100 emails at the time. Oh, wow. Um, then you go through all the emails and you try to find the, the personality you like and the, you know, and, wow. the, and the quality you, you want. Uh, that's the way I found the first one. Uh, the second one and the third one, it, they came by recommendation of the first one, actually. Mm -hmm. So I talked to them and, uh, and made it happen, basically. Right. And the f number four came from also from YouTube. I said, I need an another editor. So maybe that time we got 500 emails. Uh, we go through all of them right. and we find the person. Uh, wow. You know, YouTube is an amazing place to find high quality people. Because you can, you get a lot, you know, and you can really be picky, mm -hmm. which is amazing. So from the editors, though, that you got or the filmers there, were they working already with someone else or were they out of work or how? Because like that, how did that work? Um, one of them was a style, studying at the time. Mm -hmm. So he. So he was kind of ready to come into a role. He yeah. Was, yeah. And uh, the next ones, uh, they were. One of them, I believe, was free, and the second one was doing other things for other content creators, but he, he joined. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, everyone has. And and, and it is interesting, and because you have to have trust too, like you said, you know, they have access to your YouTube or your things. And no, actually, I'm, I'm the one who uploads. You do the you do the final upload. I do the final upload. Yeah, because the yeah. I, yeah, I, you have to have some control in general, right? It's just nice to. I mean, they, I I would not mind mind to i would not mind to have someone doing that but uh, it is true that you need to care a lot about the thumbnail right mm -hmm. and tags and all of that um but i i would love to have someone skilled enough to actually do that right so right. because uh yeah you, you want someone who is fresh to do that right uh, or who who really cares you know mm -hmm. because we are sadly in youtube uh, a lot of the exposure you are going to get comes from the title you choose and and stuff like that right yeah it's uh it's it's a fine line between clickbait and uh and doing you know making it doing the right mm -hmm. things and, and also your the algorithms and stuff are very tricky and can change so it's important to have yeah, experts yeah. And... i mean it is uh, it is tricky yes definitely uh, um mm -hmm. last thing here i know we got i do actually real quick let's just show i'm gonna mess this camera probably up let's show what we got so this is where we are guys we're in we are in uh, Northern Cyprus, nice view out the balcony there, sunset coming down. And are you, have you gotten to, uh, would you say, have you gotten to enjoy a, enough here? Have you, have you been playing and getting to, got, gone to the spa, the beaches, done any fun I, stuff? I did it one day. I had one free day. I, I explored a bit the, the beach and, and I, did, I, you know, I don't often go to the beach. I, I think I did, I, that time, uh, four days ago, it was the first time. I got inside a beach maybe for the last three, four years. Wow. Okay. Jeez, yeah. yeah so I'm that... I am a mountain person, you know. The beach is they, they are dangerous. There are dangerous things out there. Yeah. I don't like it. I'm I'm not a big I'm not I a like huge... to eat the fish. I don't like to, to stay where they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm <laughs> I'm with you. I'm not a big scuba diver or <laughs> uh you know, skydiver and stuff. I, I like to be on land. That's my 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 place. Yeah. Um uh I guess last uh last couple things here. Do you um, what, what would change for you winning this main event and you know, I'll say a million dollars comes to you, you, you win, you know, his pandemonium great for everyone. Great for this. What changes for you? Anything? Do you change your life or, or plans at all? I will spend more money making my content. You maybe you have six people and you, you hire more, no, no, no more, maybe no, no more people. But I will spend more money on the content I produce. Right. For example, uh, right now we have to buy flights to Vegas and we didn't do it yet because we don't. We can. This is the the thing of, of these times. You cannot plan your trip two weeks mm -hmm. before it happens. You need to wait for the PCR and all of that. Yeah. But for example, I'm checking flights and all of that. I like this. I like this. Uh, or it is. I don't know what what is happening. But I, all the flights I was checking today are they are all huge. I mean, the, the prices are insane. Do you have some? Do you do that, or do you have a? Yeah, I do you, that. Actually, I have. I actually have like the best person in travel, the best setup, the best hookup. They can do everything and book, and we should. We'll talk afterward, but I could probably help save you some uh, stress and time and money. I'm sure. So yeah, yeah. I, I I I know a few guys uh, who who find business class flights in yeah. cheaper and all of that. Um, 
I, I use their services, uh, but uh, and this time maybe I, I will too, because the the prices were crazy. Yeah, it's a it's a bit uh, big. It is. It's a so bit. So if care. I have more money, basically, I will care less about the spending ten k in in airplane tickets. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. It's uh. Yeah. Exactly. The overhead starts starts adding up quickly. Um, and what, what is, uh, what's your favorite stop? We'll do a couple more guys. So I'm used to, as you guys know, we usually have live, this is recorded. We also usually put the tweet out. You guys get to ask a question. So for this particular one, we will still do a tweet. We'll still put it out. You can ask a question, although we won't be looking at the direct questions. Um, and I'll, I will give a giveaway for you guys, uh, anyway, for, for retweeting and putting it out there. And of course, give a man a follow here across the socials. And, and at the current moment, Instagram, Twitter, what, what is the more uh, best place or, or just everywhere? You, you're pretty active on the socials? Uh, I have, I upload um, on both. Uh, not very often. I am not, uh, I, I don't post like a lot or anything like that. Uh, but I, on Instagram, I will post a, a few pictures every now and then when I'm playing tournaments. On Twitter, I will give updates. On, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, stuff like that. Uh, but I am... I'm not a huge social media guy or anything like that. I'm. I think uh, it is good to keep yourself out of that as much as you can. Yes, it's 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 a tricky one because for myself, I think I would not be on social media at all. But for me, it's a big part of my my yeah, business. Yeah, yeah. But it's hard, right? Because like there's a fine line between I find myself scrolling and looking. But it's part of it's educational for me because I like to see what are the other people doing, how are they doing? Oh, now they're now it's reels, now it's this, now like. How does it work? But it's also, yeah, you can lose a lot of time. And, and yeah, yeah and, that's uh, the problem. And we were talking before about this. How do you manage to do so many things at the same time? Mm -hmm. What do you think about this? That uh, you need to you need to make decisions and and follow them, right? So I try to avoid as much as possible spending time on social media uh, by not having it in the mobile, for example, uh, by having someone making the post mm -hmm. uh, yeah for example, wow. i do the final upload on youtube for example but on twitter and all that i will not right makes uh makes perfect sense and do you have tiktok snapchat anything or just instagram no, twitter I, I should probably but i don't i want to get a tiktok myself i have one i've never uploaded one I, thing I but it's... people doing tiktoks i, I don't like them I, I don't like it's it. not it's not for me either <laughs> but i think it's a, it's one of the bigger you know demog it's sort of like the reels now on instagram do you know what i'm thinking hmm. lately as long as what I'm doing works, you know, on YouTube and everything, I don't need what I'm doing to work better if it already works. If it's bro if it's not broke, don't fix it. If the price is to be on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I like that. Thought. I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to. Uh, if my life is in danger and TikTok, only TikTok can save it. Yeah, we can discuss. Right, right. <laughs> no, but yeah, I, I like that. I like that line of thinking. Okay. And uh, all right, cool. Is there any other uh, closing remarks? I mean, hopefully we go heads up in the uh, the tournament. Maybe we make a deal and, and you know, we ride off in the sunset in our channels or no deal. Hopefully we, 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 we win, all of, all of us. We win. We got the first prize, both of us. Yes. And we make a lot of money. Yes. Uh, if we can. If listen, <laughs> how about this? If we listen, if we go, if we go one, two, we make a deal heads up, we fly, we take a private jet to Vegas. Is that can we do that? It'd be a little bit private of a jet. a little bit of a spew. I, I know not, you won't do it. If we go first and if we go one and two. I, I think it would not be a smart. Okay, fine. We we, we throw yeah. a big party and we, we save the money for we the can't private have jet. A party, a big... we can enjoy ourselves, okay. but I would never because you know the money you are spending on the private jet, you could spend it. I understand, I but I'll say this: if you have three, four, five people with you, I have my family versus first class. It's not; it wouldn't be like as crazy much more than you think than business. Like it would be a lot more, but it wouldn't be like. Are not the private jets like a hundred k or stuff? Like yeah, that. it'd be like a hundred. It'd be to Vegas from here would be it would be expensive, but you like, know, I, I I'm I, I love I love flying in business class, and I do all the time. Yeah. So I basically in the last uh, three years I flew uh, business almost every time. Yeah. And I think there is very little difference between the quality you get in business and first class. I'll Maybe in the, American Airlines is different. I'll tell you the difference. So I also agree. First of all, from European travel, Euro I, Euro I, European companies are shit. Right, but no, but I'm saying that. So to fly from Europe to US, I yes. would prefer to fly actually business than a private jet. I've done it before on a private jet. It's scarier. 
because it's small plane. It's not super comfortable. I, I don't like a, a small yeah, yeah. airplane either. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But so for an overseas flight, I wouldn't even actually, I'll take that back. If we go one, two, yeah, we fly business together and uh, we, we have a big party. But I'm saying it's not actually as much more than you would think because of business tickets um, per person in a private, it, it would be it would be a spew. It would not be the best way to spend the money. You need to try uh, airplanes from uh, Asian or uh, yeah, Asian airlines or mm -hmm. Middle East air airlines like uh, Emirates. Uh, yeah, Qatar Emirates. Airways. I've done Emirates before. You yeah. try business class on those. Uh, no, I know airlines. they have showers on the there and late. That's unbelievable. That's in first, I would say. Yeah, but you know, uh, you take those, uh, you know, for two k. Mm -hmm. Most of the times, you can get a first class experience uh, in other European or no, it's special. Those those, are like, those those airlines um, those airlines are special. Yeah, yeah. So. I can show you a picture of uh, the one you get. They should pay me for this kind of promotion. This guys, let's put it out there. You know, we can the tag them. We I mean, can take a clip and and give them a. Give this is how you fly on on Qatar Airways, for example. This was two K, maybe. Mm, there you go. You have your own cabin. Yeah, it's like a, its own little house. Yeah, it's it's sweet. I yeah, that I agree. It is. Uh, so you don't need to spend one hundred k in a flight. You you get this for two k. Yeah, no, that's it. The, so the only thing about private in general in in overseas, I don't agree. But like, it's it's a saving yeah. of time. It's just like the time difference. Like to, if in, okay. in the U.S., for example, to go around, you know, you just show up when you want, when you want, boom, boom, boom. You say like out instead of checking bag and doing this, and it's a, it's just that thing. But yeah, to go overseas, I but agree. You, you have I don't know. Uh, Eight of those, I prefer to buy a house, another house. Yeah, it's all, it's all, real. listen, I'm not in a position, I'm not trying to, I'm not saying I'm out here flying private all the time. I'm just saying, you know, in a, in a, in a circumstance, there's an inflection point, you know, when you hit a certain number and a certain thing, yeah, sure you do it, but it's, we're not, we're not close. We, we need to win a lot of main events. We need to be rich. Yeah, yeah we're we, not, need, we need to be fuck rich. Right? Yeah. Fuck level rich. It's, we got another 10, 20 years, probably, of grinding. Yeah. You know, it's not going to happen tomorrow or winning a tournament. But anyway, listen, uh, I am, uh, this has been very informative. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is podcast number 148 we are going to do our best to put the best runs on the cyprus uh, millions north cyprus millions main event here courtesy of party poker this has been uh, a big treat and i i wish you the best for your your vlogs all your stuff and i hope we get to uh hang out and and collaborate on some future stuff so thank you very much very nice to meet you officially in person get to know you better and uh any and, and again just tell everyone where they can find you on on the socials. Is it? It's your name or Zeros Poker is what you go by. They, uh, they can find me everywhere uh, by typing Zeros Poker, uh, and I will pop up. Awesome. And then actually, the closing question I meant to ask Zeros Poker. Can you explain what does that mean? Why? Where's that? Uh, the nickname come from? What is that? What is I that? started playing video games when I was uh, maybe 12, okay. 13 years old, uh, playing strategy games, and Zeros was my first nickname. Or one of the one of the first one, the one that, that stick. Okay. Uh, so um, yeah, when I started producing content and all of that, I wanted to use that name because it means it is like uh, it is like my own name, important level almost. Okay. I would say. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. All right. Well, thank you so much. And guys, thanks for watching. Again, this will be on all the audio outlets, the major podcast platforms, as well as it's going to be uploaded on YouTube, of course, where you're watching this now. So uh, again, thank you so much to Elias, if I'm saying that right, Elias Gutierrez. And uh, we will see you guys for some live vlogs here from uh, North Cyprus, courtesy Party Poker at Millions. Big tournament, big turnout. Won't spoil what's going on, but uh, we got stuff happening and we'll see you on the tables. Bye-bye.